we want you to enter into this year with a clear conscience. Last week we talked about ending the year with a clear conscience. Well, we're talking about starting the year with a clear conscience, knowing that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Why don't you tell someone that you love them today? If you've not told Jesus that you love them, why don't you tell them that you love them on this first Sunday? Why don't you just say, Holy Spirit, we love you. Jehovah God, we love you. He has been so, so good to us. Many of us thought we may not make it through 2020, but here we are still standing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we want to welcome you today, and we want to tell you that we love you. As we prepare to worship the Lord our God today, we want you to worship him in spirit and in truth. Why don't you stand in the sanctuary? Let us read our, our Psalms 91, our scripture that we have focused on, that we are protected in the dwelling place of Jesus Christ. So why don't you get your Bibles, if you're able, if you're not, read on the screen. But we do, we encourage you this year, pick up your Bible. We know we put a lot of things on the screen, but now it's time to turn some pages, amen? And we wanna start 21 turning pages, amen? I'll even wait for you to get your Bible, amen? Bless the Lord. We want you to turn some pages today. We want you to feel the word of God. God. Hallelujah. Let us read together. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Hallelujah. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Hallelujah. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked in the name of Jesus. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall keep his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Last verse. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Let us pray this morning. Father God, we come in the name of Jesus. We come this first Sunday of 2021. So Lord, we come with a grateful heart today. We come worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we come in the name of Jesus, lifting those that are online in the sanctuary. We pray a covering over them. Lord, even as we began this new year, we command a fresh anointing over our lives. So we come even, Lord God, seeking a fresh revelation in the name of Jesus. Through it all, Lord God, in 2020, we still stand together in love. Through it all, Lord God, through pandemics and COVID-19 and economic depression, Lord, we're still standing together in love. And we know that that love is the love of Jesus Christ. So we bless those that are online today. Bless mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, sisters and brothers. Even now in the name of Jesus, we lift our lives before you with a clear conscience. Father, we confess and repent any sin that we've sinned against thee, knowingly and unknowingly, word, thought, or deed. We come before you pure, hallelujah, with a pure conscience today, knowing God that you are our cover. So we say thank you, we love you, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the sanctuary. Our mission statement today, to lead a dying world into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our vision, we will love and train disciples through the word of God and through his holy 
Ghost power. I don't know about you today, but I do know that the Lord has been faithful to me. Has he been faithful to you? Have he been faithful to you? Has he been holy? Hallelujah. Well, this song says, I call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. Come on and sing it with us if you know it. I call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are and holy you be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, I call you righteous, Lord. I call you righteous. Your name is righteous. You are so righteous to me. I call you. I call you righteous. Your name is righteous. Righteous you are, and righteous you be. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I call you awesome. I call you awesome. Your name is awesome. You are so awesome to me. I call you, I call you awesome. Your name is awesome. Awesome you are, and awesome you be. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You healer, your name is healer. You are the healer to me. I call you, I call you healer. Your name is healer. Healer you are, and healer you be. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I call you all that. You have been all that to me. I call you, I call you all that. Your name is all that, all that you are, and all that you be. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah,
we thank God for another year to experience Jesus together and everything God has for us to experience him as the body of believers in 2021. It's going to be great. It's going to be miraculous and it's going to be life changing. Hallelujah. Our devotion scripture is coming from John chapter 17 verses 21 through 23. Praise the Lord. Say amen when you have it. John chapter 17 verses 21 through 23 and I'll be reading from the NIV version that all of them may be one father just as you are in me and I am in you may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then, I say then, the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Praise God for the word, shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for the word, Lord, that says you are in us and we are in you, Lord. We thank you that we have this unity, Lord, founded in you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we've been grounded in your love, Lord, and we are the saints and your people, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we will continue to pray, Lord, and seek your face, Lord, and turn from our wicked ways, Lord, because then you said you will heal our land lord so we thank you lord as a body of believers lord we come into unity lord lord we know that nothing shall separate us from the love of god not COVID 19 lord not the unruliness and the unrest in the government lord lord jesus we trust you lord that you are making a way for us lord and lord we stand and we will see your glory lord we will be your glory lord we will walk in your glory lord because we are unified in you lord and lord we are stronger together lord in you lord lord you put us together united us lord and no man can divide us lord so we thank you lord for your love lord the love that you give us lord that we are not consumed lord lord we give you the glory right now lord and it is in jesus name i pray and all the believers say amen Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. You may be seated. We are so grateful for your being here today. Once more, we say welcome, welcome, welcome to the first Sunday of 2021. We praise God for you. You are starting off your year in a great place. If you are listening to the word, if you are in the house of worship, we do. We want to end well and we want to start well. Amen. So what better way to start your year? rejoicing in the Lord. It may not be the way that you want it to be. We know many people want it to be in the sanctuary on the first Sunday, but the Lord shared this with me. You should want to be in the sanctuary more than just the first Sunday. Amen. Many people are breaking their neck wanting to get to church the first Sunday, but the Lord wants you in church every Sunday. He wants you to love him every Sunday. It's not about numbers for God. Amen. Sometimes we get fixed on chronological uh, numbers and things of that nature, but the Lord wants your heart all the time. Amen. Not just on special occasions. They say that some Christians call CME Christians. They just come on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. But the Lord is saying, I need your whole heart in 21. Hallelujah. Almost ready to preach right now. So he wants your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the beginning of a brand new life for us. Amen. Bless the Lord. Brand new mercies every day. 
Bless the Lord. So we welcome you today. Why don't you text someone, call someone, knock on those doors, and have someone come and join in with you as we worship the Lord our God, as we go into the Word of God. We thank God for you. Why don't you tag us, check in, and share with us your Bible, your coffee, your face. If you uh, got your hair combed, bless the Lord. And we, we would love to see you. Amen. We thank God for you. We miss you guys so, so very much. So we welcome you today, and we thank God for you. It is a time for us to give now. This is the first of the year, and we pray that you would give unto the Lord, that you would even give unto the Lord a sacrificial offering. You know, we know that we have not been, we've never been head bashers about giving. We've never begged for money. The Lord has always provided for greater friendship and those around us. But we ask that you would give cheerfully not out of compulsion but if you want to be in church on Sunday you want to give on Sunday amen so we want to give unto the Lord a tithe which is what God wants to receive and a offering is what we bring unto him so we thank God for you today those of you that have been supporting us all throughout the year since March 15 many of you I've not seen you and it's because the church has been closed and, and things of that nature but we do thank you for your support so we have four ways in which you can give you can give on our PayPal if you're old like me you still writing checks amen somebody will come pick that check up from you or you can drop it here at the office from 10 until 2 30 you also can mail it in if you still write letters and you still use envelopes amen you can send that in and we will be so so very honored so you don't want to miss your blessing you want to start off the year giving unto the Lord amen so why don't you just grab your tithe your offering put it in your hand I know some of you are paid electronically just put it in your heart and let us pray for this seed for the beginning of the year Lord we bless you today we thank you for your grace and your mercy Lord, we thank you for resources in the name of Jesus. Lord, we may not have all that we want, but we have all that we need. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, for supplying our every need according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. So bless every tithe, every offering. Lord, bless those who desire to give, but have it not. We command a blessing on them in the same manner. Lord, you know their heart today. So we bless greater friendship in every church that is open. Lord, we bless the thousands upon thousands of church, churches that have closed God. We do. We, we pray a blessing upon them today. Lord, we know even now that we are blessed to have our doors remain open. We are blessed that we have parishioners that are giving unto the Lord in spite of COVID, in spite of being in and out. So we bless them today in a special way. We command a thousandfold portion upon their lives, their finances, their health, their family, their friends, every essence of life. We lift you. We seek first your kingdom, God, and your righteousness, and we receive everything added unto us. In Jesus' name. We pray, thank God, amen, in Jesus' name. Your seed has been blessed. We thank you for giving today. We thank God for you and the support that you give. Bless the Lord. Why don't you just give the Lord a hand of praise right wherever you are. It's so good to see everyone. Hallelujah. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. As we go into prayer today, our altar call, we want you to lay everything some of you have may have drugged some stuff out of 20 into 21. Well, you know what? We're going to supernaturally send it back. Amen. And it's going to stay there. We're going to rejoice in the Lord. Leave all your cares, all your problems, whatever you're going through at the altar today. As Reverend Rogers comes and shares with us the prayer of the people, why don't you trust him today with all your heart? Amen. Amen. We have a embarked on an, a new journey uh, we are now into a land that we've never seen before called 2021 but we're going to continue to be people of prayer even though it's a new year so if every head would bow every eye would close let's look to the throne of grace and father we thank you for the continued privilege that we can come to the throne of grace boldly, not brashly, not sanctimoniously, 
but only but out of relationship with you you allow us access kind of reminds me of when Queen Esther went before the king and, and he, if he had not invited her she could have been executed but he extended the royal scepter and so she was allowed access to that king father we thank you that we don't need a royal scepter from you you allow us you invite us and encourage us to come into your presence so as we come to you today um, I really appreciate what what Pastor Bunton just said about dragging things from last year into this year there were some things that went on during last year that at first we thought were hurting us but actually what they did was help us to increase our capacity to test our resolve to make us more resilient to help us be more creative in ways of ministry and even to test some of our our resolve so we thank and we praise you for those things that were are more for your glory and for our good than for anything else as we continue in this in this year uh, many of us did not wait for new year's eve and new year's day to make changes in our life you showed us some things during the year that had to be changed it was enough to consider those changes and then we enacted on them and we continue them even to this day many have resolved to read the bible in a year or read it twice during the year many have resolved to read more books than watching movies and many have resolved to be a better employee or be a better employer and some of us have resolved to even more importantly be a better follower of the lord jesus christ so father we thank and we praise you for this opportunity to see 2021 truth be told some of us never thought we'd see this year years ago we thought we would never see a certain age in our lives but here we are and we thank you because it's only because of your grace and your mercy we ask now father that you would even increase the flock touching hearts of men women boys and girls everywhere who only know about you but they don't know you as lord and savior 2021 might be their last year and january 3rd might be their last day we don't know so we ask you to stretch out your hands right now touch hearts and minds remind and summon and inform others of your great love for them and encourage them and invite them to be a part of your family thank you lord for your adoption agency where you take anybody doesn't matter what color they are doesn't matter what age or what gender they are doesn't matter what they do for a living that you're just inviting but all should come to repentance so we thank you we praise you that we're not the same as we were yesterday and we're not the same as we will be tomorrow we will continue in this process called sanctification and we're going to continue to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ so if anybody is listening father to this prayer anybody praying with us whatever their cares or concerns remind some and inform others that you are bigger than anything that we can go through that you even in Sunday school you taught us that we are super conquerors that we are overcomers that we are to walk in victory and in triumph because of who you are in our lives we give you glory and honor in advance of how you're going to deliver your people and heal your people and save your people strengthen your people provide and protect for your people in Jesus' name we pray help us to represent the kingdom every day you give us and we'll give you the glory the honor and the praise in Jesus name we pray amen amen bless the Lord why don't you give the Lord praise right wherever you are why don't you just bless him right wherever you are today give him all the glory the honor and the praise why don't you just think about how good God has been to you over the years over the last year so many things have taken place and I was sitting contemplating New Year's night I, I literally stayed up New Year's Eve all the way until New Year's Day uh, 6 7 in the morning I was just up thinking about the goodness of God and where he has brought me from and how he continues to bless me and I'm trying not to to get overwhelmed but when I think about all that God has done for me where he's brought me from words just cannot express the love that he has shown me and even you 
today. We want to start this year with a clear conscience. We know some of us have not been perfect. Well, all of us have not been perfect. But some things that we did in 21, we just refused to do in 2021. And so we come in the name of Jesus praying for you as we prepare for the word, God. We pray that you would open hearts, that you would soften even the fallow ground that's hardened in our hearts. Lord, over this last 10 months, many people have not stepped foot in a sanctuary, not for service, maybe for dropping in and dropping out, but many have not stepped foot in the sanctuary. So we pray a blessing on them today. We pray a covering on them. And we, we pray, Lord God, that we would miss the fellowship. We pray, Lord God, that we would miss the corporate worship. So we pray now for young and old, that Lord, this word would even now not fall on fallow ground, but would fall on a good soil in our heart. That this year, we will grow. This year, we will love more. This year, we will give more. This year, we will forgive more. So we bless, Lord God, all those that are listening in the sanctuary and the families thereof. So this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Holy Spirit, take over. Move even now. Use me, Lord God, to preach your gospel. In Jesus' name, we pray, thank God, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We pray that you're getting your notebook, your pen, and your pencil and began to share uh, with us the word of God and what he is sharing with us this day. I've been thinking over the last couple of weeks about so many things and the different changes God has put in my heart for our church as well as my family. And we are so grateful that this is the season where the Lord is going to do great things. And so if you have your Bible this morning, why don't you go to Ephesians 6. I know last week we preached about the gift of righteousness. Go to Ephesians 6 and beginning with 10. Beginning with verse 10. And so on a recap, we talked about last week, have you opened your gift? The gift of righteousness. Now, what I want you to know today, as the Lord was sharing with me of some other things, it's just so much stuff flowing. You have to understand when I'm up here, the Lord is impregnating me with the word and I don't want to have a miscarriage. So I have to give it when it's time because there's all these things that I see that are floating around, words and all of these things that the Lord has given me, but it's so overwhelming that I have to keep focus. So we're going to go as the Lord shares with us. So it, 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 we talked about being righteous. We talked about many of us, many of us, if not all of us, have times when we are self-righteous. And that does not mean that you go around thinking that you all this, that, and the other. But you know, depression is self-righteousness. Discouragement is self-righteousness. Well, why would you say that, Pastor? And there's so many people that are depressed. It's because when you are discouraged or depressed, now listen, I've been there. But I got to move out of that as soon as I can. Because when you are discouraged or depressed, you're saying, God... You can't handle it. You're saying, God, whatever it is that's causing me to be depressed, you can't handle it. <laughs> no matter what discouragement, depression, whatever the case, yes, we're, we know about grief. Yes, we know that grief is, is natural. But you don't have to camp there. You don't have to live there. When you're grieving, we do understand that. But we want you to know today that Jesus is the answer. You are righteous in him. As the Sunday school lesson said today, most worries and anxieties, 85% or 90% of the things that you worry about never manifest itself. Our mind takes us somewhere that we'll never go. And the Lord is saying, you got to trust me. Be ye not anxious. You don't have to worry. So why don't you turn your word to Ephesians 6. And we're going to share some things with you. And we're going to talk about this as we go throughout the year. And the word of God says, finally, my brethren, 
be strong in the Lord <laughs> and in the what? Power of his might. Now, why is Paul saying, finally, this is his life. He, he's, he's ending this particular book to the church of Ephesus. And he's saying, finally, after he's talked about what? Why would he be saying, finally? Well, Paul has now talked about how to live theologically, first three chapters, and how to live morally, last three chapters in the book of Ephesians. So he's saying, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So he's saying, even now, after he said it in, 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 in Ephesians 1, that you have the resurrect. Now listen, he's building you up. Watch this now. In Ephesians 1, 19 and 20, it says, you have the resurrection power of God in you. Now, now that goes back to me saying that, you know, being grieved uh, or being discouraged and, and depressed uh, uh, often. What is it saying? It's saying that you're not operating in the resurrecting power of Jesus. And ladies and gentlemen, the reason why we talked about self-righteousness and you being righteous is so that you know you have a right to exhibit that resurrecting power. The Word of God says that you are an ambassador. You have power over your circumstance. Oh my God, I almost got happy. You have power over your circumstance. You speak things into existence by the power of the word of God in you by the power of God in you you speak things that are not as if they were as the Bible says amen you have the same power Hebrew said that God framed the world how by the words of his mouth many of us are confessing some things but sometimes you're confessing condemnation in your life. You're confessing, but you're not confessing the truth. Hallelujah. The known truth of who you really are. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to get through this first verse. Ladies and gentlemen, the devil would want you to feel as though you're a loser. Even in this season, we know that, that that's why it's so important to get back in the sanctuary. That's why it's so important to be around fellow believers. I was in the shower. It's going to shock a few folk. I was in the shower this morning. And the Lord, not that I take a shower. Praise the Lord. But the Lord, I'm telling you, the Lord said it so loud. And I thought he was talking about me. <laughs> he said, Michael, if people are not missing their church home. They should find another church. <gasps> what? I said it. If you are not missing being in the sanctuary, I'm going to say it anyway. I would have to question your relationship with Jesus. I, 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 I ain't too scared of nobody. But you let me tell you, if you are not missing the saints, if you are not missing the saints, missing the smile, I'm looking at Reverend Clark and Sister Let man, I go crazy with joy when I see the saints. You know, we don't got to like each other all the time, but we love each other. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere with this. But, and listen, and, and that's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that's okay. You have to go where you can worship. Man, I can't say that enough. If you are in a church where you cannot authentically worship God, you're in the wrong church. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody share with me, you know, we're open to the people that they're supposed to have the mandates open 25% or whatever the case. And somebody said, you know, it, it ain't going to matter much because probably just 25% of people are going to start coming back to church when it's open anyway. And, and I said, hey, that's on them. That is not my burden to carry. We preach love. If love cannot draw you, Michael Button can't. If you are not, now listen, I'm, I'm saying this because there's some folk I know need to hear this. Or you may need to share it with somebody else. 
I'm trying to tell you, if you are not missing standing together with the saints, worshiping together with the saints, encouraging one another, I mean, if you're not missing that, you really have to go into your prayer closet and you need to ask the Lord, Lord, is this where I'm supposed to be? And, and I've said this before, and we're talking exactly what this lesson is about. This message is about this morning. I ain't off somewhere else. I'm sharing with you what the Lord is sharing with me in this season. Yes. In this season, the Lord wants to reunite the body of Christ. Now, he will separate the wheat from the tare. Did you know COVID-19 is working for the Lord? Did you know that? He's working for the Lord. And I said he, because this is a demonic spirit, COVID-19 and the corona, that's a demonic spirit. That's why we do Psalms 91. It's a pestilence. It's a plague. So we understand that. But as I share with you today, that COVID-19 is bringing out the true worshipers. I know I, I've tried it at home. I got bless y'all. I am so grateful that the Lord allows us to come into the sanctuary every Sunday. I've tried it. Man, if you ain't dying to get back in the sanctuary. Oh, my God. Because it's tough watching it on TV. I tried that. I tried that Christmas Eve. And, man, I almost, I got a gun. <laughs> and it was tough because I needed the fellowship. I needed to be in the sanctuary. I needed to hear somebody else say amen. How many of you at home right now, and I know many of you do. I got some names and, and some heads flying in my face right now. But many of you are at home witnessing. But some of us, as I was, it was hard for me to say amen watching it on, on my phone. Especially if somebody else in the room with you. I know you're experiencing that. You got to get back in the sanctuary. You got to be missing the sanctuary and you got to be wanting to get back in it. And if it's not this one, go somewhere where you can worship. Hallelujah. Let's go. Back to Ephesians 6. That was a little caveat, I, I, but that's part of my sermon. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So he's saying, finally, I've given you all the tools theologically and morally. Paul is saying, I've given you the doctrine of the gospel, that you are righteous, that you have resurrecting power in you, that you have everything that's necessary. COVID-19 is a battle. You're in warfare right now, so you're battling against the evil one. So it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the tricks or the schemes of the devil. Keep going to 12. We're going to go all the way to 20. Verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. I'm preparing you for 21, guys. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Now watch this. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, hallelujah, and having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And it says this, above all, now this says above all, what's above all? Taking the shield of faith. So, if you don't know the word, how is your shield of faith? Because the Bible says faith cometh by what? Hearing. Many of us are wondering why we're getting blasted by the evil one with the fiery darts. It's because your faith. Now listen, I'm sharing this with you. Over these last 10 months, you know, some people have dropped off. I mean, that's a reality. Many people, the only time they got the word was when they were in church and now that they've not been in church they've dropped off and they've become comfortable and they've become complacent and they they they, they may not be experiencing anything 
that is detrimental in their life right now, whatever the case. But let me share something with you. Unless you have Jesus, you will not have the fullness of joy in your life. Many wondering why you're not, uh, are, are, you're, you're not joyful. And you know, it's because a lot of the pressures and the things that are going on. But when you really get intimate with Jesus, no matter what you're going through, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. No matter what you're going through, what you're dealing with. Just like Reverend Rogers was talking about this morning, uh, the young boy that's walking to a uh, uh, church and, and surely goodness and mercy was following them. When you know that Jesus is with you, you have no fear. No, oh, I'll say that proudly. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So you don't have to walk in fear. Watch this. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Verse 17 says, and take the helmet of salvation, guard your mind, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Verse 19, and for me. That utterance, this is for me now. Uh, this is for me. I'm, I'm, I'm asking the Lord this for me. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I might open my mouth boldly. What happens when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost? You get bold. It makes you bold. Just like riding on the bus, reading the Bible. You don't, you don't mind wearing a Jesus hat. <laughs> you will go wherever. You don't mind letting people know who you believe in. And who is your savior? Because it opens up conversation. And that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Last verse. And it says, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Now for the young folk, let's read that in the Message Bible. Go start back at Ephesians 6.10. And we're going to do this for the young folk because we know uh, we have some young people people in here and then listen now Paul is saying and that about wraps it up finally my brother God is strong and he wants you strong so take everything the master has set out for you well made weapons of the best materials and put them to use so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way COVID-19, economic depression, uh, uh, discouragement. This is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about it in a couple of hours. This is for keeps. A life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. Ladies and gentlemen, the evil day is it's here. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get, church, every weapon God has issued so that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, verse 15, peace, verse 16, faith, hallelujah, hallelujah, and salvation are more than words. Faith. Grace, righteousness is more than a word. Learn how to apply them. Hallelujah. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. So how do you fight? With the word of God. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. I could talk right there, but I ain't going to talk right there. That's a message Bible translation. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. Are you praying for those that have dropped out? <laughs> Hallelujah. And we do. We know that many people have just not even been concerned with church uh, since there's no accountability. That's the truth. No accountability to say that you're here, say that you're not, say that you're listening, whatever the case. But I'm here to tell you, the Lord knows. 
And don't forget to pray for me. Pray that I'll know what to say and have the courage to say it at the right time. Praise the Lord. Telling the mystery to one and all, the message that I, listen at this in verse 20, verse 20, that I, Jill Burr preacher, that I am, I can relate to that, and responsible for getting out. Hallelujah. So thank you. Thank you. No, no, no more. We won't go to Tychicus. Tychicus delivered the letters to Colossus and Ephesus and Philipp, Philippi. He was the one that took the message. So four topic, and this is our theme. Yep, I made it, and we're going to walk this thing out through this month. Our theme for this year that the Lord has given me is we still stand together in love. And the Lord gave me those words carefully. I mean, everyone, he kind of explained to me why he was giving it to me. We as the body of Christ, but most importantly, we as me and Jesus. See, it comes even before the church. It does. Your we, your first we should be you, Jesus, Holy Ghost, Jehovah God. That's your first we. And then the other we is the body of Christ, the believers. So we still, what do you mean still? That means that we've been through something and we still stand it. This church has been almost 70 years here and we are still standing. And you cannot tell me it ain't been some problems up in this camp. Even in my duration, but over the years, there's things that's taken place. But what? We still are standing. The church is still standing. In spite of COVID, listen, and, and I'm going to talk about the evil days because the evil days are here. And so the Lord is saying, get ready for the evil days. How many of you have ever experienced anything you experienced now and in 2020? Now, I got some about that too. Now, everybody was saying... Oh, I'll be glad when 2021 comes. 2020 is gone. Amen. We, we all said that, right? Uh, they even got a little meme where it was a 2020 in a garbage can on fire. They was saying 2020 is done. I'm finished with it. So 21 is going to come. And when 21 came, how did you feel? No different. Did you feel any different when 21 came? COVID didn't leave. Did your bank account get fatter? So is it really about the chronological time? It's not about numbers. And we're saying, oh, 21 is going to be this. And, and yes, in the name of Jesus, I pray it gets better. Praise the Lord. I pray it gets better. Now, I don't, I don't even claim this, but in, in the name of Jesus, we cover it in the name of Jesus. But it's a new strain of COVID they talking about now, ain't they? It's a new strain. They didn't already adapt to the virus, the vaccine. Amen. Now they're trying to manipulate the vaccine. Yep, I watch the news too. But it doesn't mean that it's going to get better in the sense of how you see it. You have to get better. We still stand together in love. In spite of, ladies and gentlemen, thank God for the prayer every morning at seven because it gives us a connection and what we're doing praise the lord keep on preaching holy ghost so what we are aiming for in 21 obviously is to be more virtual getting people involved and doing some things like that and we're working on that administratively and and dealing with some other things even up on yesterday we had a a little virtual movie for the kids and it was so good seeing all of the children and we want to start doing that with everybody because why? We still stand together in love. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not an island. I'm trying to tell you, you are going to need somebody sometime. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how much education you have. I don't care how fine you are. You're going to need somebody sometime. And so what the devil is trying to do is get you divided. And many of us, even, I, I told you COVID-19 was escape for some folk. Some folk was already prepared to drop out. And the COVID helped them. But I'm trying to share with you now. It is time for us to stand together. 
in love. So what is he doing? So what is Paul doing? Paul is preparing you. This, these, 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 these words and these lessons, even with the Sunday school lessons, are coming in a timely fashion. Well, why are you teaching us about being armored up? Because this 21, God is going to expect more from you. And the devil says, now, because get it. The devil was saying, oh, man, I didn't get them in 2020. I'm going to have to step my game up in 21. You think he's sitting back just, oh, yeah, let him create the vaccine. We're going to be good. You think he's just sitting there? What he's going to do is try to attack you from another area. He's going to try to harm your marriage, harm your relationships, harm your job atmosphere, harm your finances. And, but when that takes place, ladies and gentlemen, you got to have somebody to call on and share that with them. It, 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 it's unfortunate that we don't trust a lot of folk nowadays. Because, you know, some of us gums flap a little too much. So we can't share a lot of things, and that's just the opposite of what God wants us to do. That's why it's so good to have Jesus, because Jesus don't tell you secrets. Amen. Jesus don't say, I told you you should have did that, or don't feel bad, and make you feel like garbage and feel like dirt. But you know what? He is saying right now that in this season, we must all stand together in love. So he's saying, listen, 21 is coming. Armor up. He's saying, armor up. So he's saying, look, look at what he's saying. He's saying, the evil day. Go to, go to Ephesians 6, 13 and 14. And I'm just going to touch on this. And then I, I'm going I'm to I'm close it down. I just want to whet your appetite of what we're going to be talking about this year. It's the ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be some amazing changes where our relationships are going to grow and spark this year and this season. Because you know what? Sometimes the Lord got to make you uncomfortable. He's got to stretch you to let you know that you need to move out a little bit further. It says, be prepared. Go back to the King James Version, sweetheart. Be prepared, it says. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand. Go to 14. Stand, therefore. So he's telling us today. He's telling us today. Listen at this. Because our theme comes from Ephesians 6, 13 and 14. When you've done all you can do to stand, and this is what I'm sharing with you right now. Hallelujah. When you have done everything you can do in your power. Watch this now. Because that's why the Lord is saying continue to stand. Because when you have went through, I know many of us have went through some things we thought we wouldn't make it out of. It don't have to be 2020. It could have been some childhood stuff. And I mean, everybody ain't been in church all their life. Even though I have been, I was halfway in. Let's just say that. But it's times in my life where, you know, suicide wasn't a bad idea. <laughs> I know I'm talking about this. I know about discouragement. Yeah, I know about saying, Lord, it ain't worth living. You know, I may as well just eat one. Oh, yeah, I've been there. But the Lord had to say, listen, your strength is in me. Your strength is in me. And you know what? I, 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 I was like a lot of you. No friends. Hard, I'm not to the point of no friends. But nobody to really confide in, a confidant. And many of us are going it alone, ladies and gentlemen. And the Lord is sharing with you today. Reach out. You know, I'm not going to get through most of this. But the Lord is sharing even with me. You know, you know, suicide rate for pastors is very high. It's like three. I think it's like dentists and air comp controls and something like that. But pastors are right there. And, but you know why? Because pastors don't hang out a lot of times with other, other pastors or, or other people. They don't. And it's just kind of like somewhat their nature that they kind of stay to themselves. And you know what the devil does with that. And this is what some of you are going through as well. What the devil does is say, don't nobody care about you. He'll say things like that so you'll, you'll feel down and depressed and downtrodden. And you have to say, Holy Ghost, your job is to encourage me. So you have to understand that there are times when you'll have to call someone. 
And this year, ladies and gentlemen, I know we have been separated since March 15th. But listen here. We have made it through the worst. I know you may not see it, but even now we're gaining daylight. Man, that's a plus for me. That means winter is halfway over. Amen. And you got to, hey, if you don't look forward to the small things, you're going to have a major problem. Every time I see the 12, 13 extra seconds of daylight, I'll be like, Lord, we on our way to summer. Hallelujah. And so many of us, even in this, especially in Alaska, this is how the Lord has kind of consoled my heart. But even now, many of us in this cold weather, it was difficult for us to come to church in, in December and January. Well, the Lord has given you opportunity. You ain't even got to get out and five below or whatever. If many of you could just stay home. So be encouraged with that. But let me tell you, start beginning to prepare for the return. Amen. Amen. Start beginning to prepare for the return because we as a church, Still stand together in love. I ain't going to get no further than that. I'm going to come back next week and finish. Hallelujah. Because it's some other things I want to share with you. So stand therefore, having your loins gird about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So what I'm sharing with you today that many of you that are going through, listen, doesn't matter how much money you have. Doesn't matter how much education. Doesn't matter. If you don't have an intimate relationship with Jesus, let me tell you something. How joyful are you? Now, husbands and wives, watch this now. Because there's some stuff happening in the house. Ooh, Holy Ghost. That you're not joyful. And the Lord is sharing with you today that he wants you to be joyful in your marriage. Amen. And he's speaking to me first. I thank God for my family and my wife that they put up with me. But I'm sharing with you today that the Lord is saying it is now time to become united. It is time to stand together in love. We still don't think, don't sleep. We may be closed in a sense, but our church is still very much active. Let me tell you. The best is yet to come for greater friendship. It is going to be outstanding what God is doing. He showed it to me. And, you know, you can't tell everybody everything because the devil will try to block it. He's telling me what's going to happen, what's going to not happen, who's going to stay, who's going to go. Do y'all, I already, already know. I already know who's going to support genuinely. Judas walked with Jesus three and a half years and he never told nobody he was going to betray him. So the Lord tells you, shut your mouth. When people are around you that ain't for you, he'll fight your battle. He'll fight your battle, even on your job. We just heard it this morning. You don't have to fight. Be still and know that I am God. Ladies and gentlemen, someone out there, especially some youth, and we know the youth are going through, prayerfully school will be open and they may not want it, but we got to get back to a sense of normalcy. And we got to get back to what God has called us to, and that is unity. The devil wants you separated. He wants you alone so he can try to beat you down by yourself. He does not want the church to open up. Many of you are really not seeing the bottom line. These are the evil days. Last scripture, 2 Timothy 3. I think perilous time shall come. 2 Timothy 3. And my close. Now listen to this because, ladies and gentlemen, it's not a scare tactic. Listen, if Jesus came right now, I'd be shouting hallelujah praise the lord but this is how we know these are the end days and this is why you got to be armed and weaponed up with the word of god and walking and shot in your foot with the preparation of peace and the the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness the helmet of salvation this is why the lord is saying even now in this day and this time that you have to get your armor on listen it's time to stop being baby christians and, and I don't mean that by having to know so much. I mean petty. Where 
things upset you, it doesn't really matter. Let Jesus deal with it. And so it says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And we're going to go to verse 5. And it says, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Is that happening now? Unthankful, unholy. Look at where unthankful is. It's right by being unholy. <laughs> being unthankful is a major problem in so many lives. We have a deserving attitude. Verse 3, hallelujah. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent fears, despisers of those that are good. So listen, if you're doing good and people hating on you, you're doing right. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 4, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And here's a good one right here, verse 5. Watch this, what this say. Having a form of godliness. That's churchianity, religiosity. Traditionalism. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Many people right now still don't believe that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are operable today. That they petered out when Peter petered out. But they are for you to distribute the power of God. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, you. And in order for you to receive those gifts and walk in that power, we have to come together, edify one another. What does it mean to edify? Edify literally means to build, to build up. And we as a church must begin to build up one another and not tear each other down. And the Lord is sharing with us this year that this is the year where we will grow in love, where we will give in love, where we will stand in love, right where you are today, whatever you're going through. I want you to know today that you're not alone. I want you to know today that no matter how you feel, don't feel guilty, don't feel condemned, kind of about what the word has been sharing, but just strengthen yourself in the word. Strengthen yourself in the word. So Lord, we thank you today. We bless you. We magnify you. We thank you for your encouragement, Lord. We thank you that we're stronger than we ever thought we could be. That we're closer, Lord God, even though we're not physically together. But every morning for prayer, Lord, relationships are established, Father. I can hear at the beginning how people are speaking and saying hello. And, and Lord, that is what you have called us to do. We thank you for giving, Lord, our leadership the idea of prayer every morning. Even if it's one, even if it's two, Lord God. Twelve men turn the world upside down. So, Lord, here we are asking that you would use us. Lord, Brother Jafari comes on my mind this morning. We pray a covering over him today. We pray peace in his life, strength in his body, peace in his heart in Jesus' name. We pray covering over them. Lord, we think of even Sister Pitts today. We pray a covering over her in the name of Jesus. We lift Mother Beatrice today in Jesus' name. Miss Addie, our seniors, Lord. Sister Hall, we bless them today in the name of Jesus. So we pray covering over our seniors, Father. And we pray covering over our leadership. So Lord, there may be someone online today that don't know you or, or wants to get to know you better. Lord God, let them know that we are here. We're available just because the doors are shut does not mean our heart is shut. Our heart is open unto you, O oh God. So we bless those that are online, even those in the pew today. And Lord, we know that this is becoming to be tiring. We, we pray now that we, we would get sick of watching uh, church on TV, on the phone. I command a, 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 a hatred for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And Lord, I'm not saying that to be uh, uh, out of line, but Lord, we need to come together back into the sanctuary when you say it is time. Hallelujah. We rebuke the spirit of complacency 
we rebuke the spirit of comfortability, Lord God, where we're just to the point where it does, church doesn't matter, which means you don't matter because, Lord, we are your bride. We are your bride, God, and there is no divorce in you. So we bless you and we thank you today for your grace and your mercy. We come in Jesus' name, lifting up our word, lifting up our theme, and we, re we rebuke right now in the name of Jesus every stronghold that is causing many to fall and falter day after day after day. And Lord, this is the new year, and we come this first Sunday saying, Lord, we have changed, saying, Lord, yokes are being destroyed, bonds are being broken, we are free. We have liberty in you, Jesus. So right now, in the name of Jesus, there's someone, Lord God, that is depressed right now. And it's because of loneliness, God. So we command in Jesus' name that you would put someone in their lives, Lord, physically and even spiritually, Lord God, Holy Ghost, begin to rise up, saturate the house. Angels of God, we command you to go and keep company in the home, spirits of God. Even now, we command you to overwhelm. Let them know, God, you have not forgotten Hallelujah, Lord. And we bless you today. We magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. We thank God for you today. We pray that if you don't know who Jesus is, that you can call our number, 272-4346, area code 907. You can talk to our front office. They'll direct you to a deacon, a diaconate, myself, a minister. You do not have to be alone. Don't let the devil tell you that. Even with myself. I got to branch out and I have to get someone that can encourage me. Amen. That it won't seem like I'm doing it all alone. So we need one another. We still stand together in love. Amen. So we thank God for your being here. If you want to know who Jesus is, just give us a call. God bless you today. As we prepare for our communion today, our first communion of the year. And ladies and gentlemen, don't get caught up in the numbers. I, I understand. When I was at my dad's church, uh, New Year's Eve, 2,000 people would be in the sanctuary. And I would have to preach. And I would see, now listen, because I used to be in the street, I would see all my hustling friends, pimps, all the, the prostitutes, they would all come. And they felt that if I'm in church on this Sunday, going into the new year, my life is going to be great. But you know what? It's not about dates. Yeah, they're great milestones. Yes, yes, they're great. But God is more concerned with your consistency and not your chronological aspirations. So we do know that, yes, we want to bring the year in with communion, but let me tell you, you need to bring every day in with communion. And I mean communion with Jesus Christ. And if the Lord leads you to take libation, amen. I've shared living witness, guys. If I could tell you how the Lord has delivered me from tumors, I don't even tell my family, <laughs> cancer, I, because I don't tell people that would it cause doubt, unbelief, and fear. So sometimes you just got to work it out. My shower is my sanctuary. That's where all my healings come from. <laughs> so let us take even now the bread and we're going to read our scripture today. <laughs> so why don't you read it with me this morning, wherever you are on the screen in your Bibles. That is 1 Corinthians 11. If you don't have a screen, it's verse 23. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23 and it says for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, and you are worthy. 
you are worthy. We'll be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Verse 28. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, and you are worthy, and you're eating it and drinking it in a worthy manner. Because I've explained to you, the worthy manner is knowing that you are the righteousness of God. Okay, get it? Don't feel guilty. It's Eucharist, a Thanksgiving meal. A Thanksgiving meal don't, come, don't mean come bring all your sorrows. Oh, Lord, I did this. I can't take communion. That is not thankful. Always remember, communion is a Thanksgiving meal. You're coming saying, Lord, thank you I'm righteous. Thank you you've given me grace. Thank you, Lord God. And you're thanking him because he's chosen you. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning, distinguishing, recognizing the Lord's body is what that means. Amen. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. So take your bread, which represents the body of Christ. This is distinguishing the body. This is discerning the body. Let us go to our declaration today. This is discerning the body of Christ. Now hold the bread in your hand and, and think about this, ladies and gentlemen. Pray this over your heart, over your life today. Receive it today. And let's read it together. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Thank you for bearing my symptoms and sickness at the cross so that I may have your help and wholeness. Amen. I declare that by your stripes, by the beatings you bore, by the lashes that fell on your back, I am completely healed. I may not feel like it, but I'm healed. It's coming. Amen. Continue to hold on to your healing in the name of Jesus. I believe and I receive your resurrection life in my body today, the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now take a moment and just Chew on that. Meditate on the broken body of Christ, the beatings that he bore, the thorns that was on his head, them plucking his beard out, spitting on him, kicking him. He did that so you would be healed. The beatings, the scourging, he did that so that you can be healed. Let that not be in vain. 1 Corinthians 6 and 1. Let not his grace be in vain. Amen. Next, take the cup in your hand. This represents the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary's cross. This cup represents every sin you will ever commit, past, present, and future. It's hard for some people to understand, but that's who Jesus is. So this blood represents the power of God that he's given you a remission of your sins, that you are righteous, that you don't have to be condemned. You don't have to feel guilty. The devil wants you to feel that way, but you don't. This destroys that yoke of condemnation. When you think about the blood of Jesus Christ. So let's read together. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood that has washed me whiter than snow. Your blood has brought me forgiveness and made me righteous forever. And as I drink, I celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous, which you are, which includes what? Preservation, healing, wholeness, and all your blessings. Ephesians says every spiritual blessing is yours. The Lord, blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise right where you are. You are here on the first Sunday. Praise the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your year. Amen. This is your year of prosperity, of healing, ladies and gentlemen. I keep saying that because some people got to receive that. Your healing will manifest this year. New jobs. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus financial blessing in the name of Jesus, relationships being restored. We decree and declare that over your life today. We rebuke the spirit of loneliness that keeps popping up in my head because even though you're at home with folk, don't mean you're not lonely. You could be in a room full of folk and still be lonely. 
So we rebuke that lonely spirit for we're never alone. We thank God for your being here today. We love you, we love you, we love you. We thank God for those that continue to, to be with us on our morning prayer. If you've not been on it, we encourage you at 7 a.m. to dial in and share with us uh, the prayer and a word from the Lord, a scripture. We're so thankful. Sister Lynn did it this morning. It was a blessing. And so we're grateful. So please, 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 we're going to continue to have this prayer movement until the Lord says so. And we do know that because of the dedication of those online, especially those that are keeping the line open, and I hear our, our chairman and minister, and, our, and uh, I hear Brother Jerome all the time too, and Reverend Rogers, I hear Jafari and Miss Jerry. I hear them all. I hear Miss Emma. So it's just a blessing. May not be able to see you, but I can hear you. And it just blesses my heart. So we thank God for you today. Not only that, but we will resume our prayer and Bible study on Wednesday. Amen. Bless the Lord. I'm so grateful because I've missed that. So we will. 630, we will have prayer. And 7 o'clock, we will be talking about how to follow Jesus. Now, is that lesson fitting for this season or what? Because you're going to need to know how to navigate in this season. How we, how we get through COVID-19, reopening things. The Lord is going to need you to follow him so that he will direct your pathway. Amen. So we come praying that you would even uh, share with us on Wednesday the power of Jesus, experiencing the power of Jesus. And so we ask that you would just join us. Let's grow in the word this year, amen? Let's grow in the word, let's grow in love. So we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Once more, we ask that if you have moved, if you've changed your number, your address, please update your mailing address and contact information with the front office. We had some cards returned. I know the church put some Christmas cards out. My family uh, did some personal cards. Like I said, if you didn't receive a letter personally from me and a Christmas card personally from me, that means we don't have your address or it's wrong or the number is wrong where we couldn't contact you. We want to start this year off right knowing where everyone is. We're going to do a lot of things diaconate-wise to make sure our numbers are right. But we want to tell you that we love you. We thank God for you. We thank God for those who celebrated with us last night, uh, the virtual movie night. And we had a great time with our youngsters. We know that they are kind of almost left out in the name of Jesus. But we're working on that. Amen, where we're going to have some virtual things uh, in, in, in regards to them connecting our, our middle schoolers and our high schoolers. We thank God for you, but we are going to move forward, become more virtual. We're going to even, if you need help learning how to set up your computer or whatever, we're, we're going to make a, a, a stand that we will come and show you how to get online. We do know that we'll probably be kind of running around here for another few months with things the way they are, uh, but the Lord will say when it's time that people can come and worship in truth and in comfort, and we trust in the Lord in that. So we're going to take it Sunday by Sunday. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, why don't you stand on your feet in the house and even in your homes? Why don't you stand on your feet right where you are? You want to be a part of what we're doing today as we give our benediction and our prayer over your life this week. Lord, we bless you today. We thank you. We magnify you in this place. We are so grateful for your Holy Spirit. We're so grateful for your anointing. We're so grateful for your peace. We're so grateful for your power. We're grateful for the blood that was shed. We're grateful, Lord God, for your body that was broken. So we walk even now in the residual of that, that we are the healed. We are the righteous. We are the prosperous in the name of Jesus. We are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. We are more than conquerors. We're not victims. We're victors in the name of Jesus. So we walk in victory today. Hallelujah. So we pray a covering over every family that is listening, every child, every mother, every father. We pray for our children that are in school, our teachers, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray for businesses that have closed down, their waiters and waitresses and those who are in the food industry and other areas, Lord, that have been laid off. So we pray even now that stimulus checks would come soon for them in the name of Jesus. And we command it, it would be more than we could ever imagine. So even now, we reach out unto thee, O God, and we say thank you. So the Lord bless you. 
and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you shalom peace. God bless you. Happy New Year. Have a great week. Be blessed, encouraged, and protected. God bless you.